So I have a couple of new products that I want to share with you today. I have the fire plug and ferrocerium rod from Bigfoot Bushcraft. If you're interested in hearing more about these products, keep watching. As always, before we begin, I just want to declare that these products were sent to me by Bigfoot Bushcraft. I did not pay for them. I also want to declare I'm receiving no compensation for the making of this video. Now, before I start describing these products to you, I want to give you a little bit of a backstory to set the stage for what I'm going to be doing as far as demonstrations. So to begin, when the company contacted me, I didn't jump on the deal right away or the offer right away. And the reason is, is because I had another product that I've tested before in a video and that is the fire plug from ProCamTech. So I reached out to the company and I asked them what's the difference between your fire plugs and their fire plugs? Well the company did contact me back and say they felt that they had a superior product to the one from ProCamTech and they were willing to have me compare them in a video. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm actually going to be comparing the two of them together. So let me just show you the two of them and then I can give you a little bit of a description. So both of these are a wax impregnated type of a cotton. I can't tell you exactly Exactly what the materials are but that's certainly what they feel like. What you can obviously see is that the pink one being from Bigfoot Bushcraft is considerably larger than the orange one from ProCamTech and the Bigfoot Bushcraft ones are heavier. In fact they weigh 24 grams a piece as opposed to 17 grams a piece for the ones from ProCamTech and the way I arrived at that data was I had to take 10 of them because they're so light. I had to take 10 of each and then divide by 10 to get the average weight for each one of these. But it does the larger size that by itself equate to a better product. Well, we're going to show you the two of them in action side by side in a moment's time. All right, so the other two products that Bigfoot Bushcraft sent to me were one, the tin that contains the fire plug. So this tin is exactly that, uh, a tin plated metal tin. It has a friction fit. It's not a screw top. You do have to kind of work it off. It's intended for holding 50 of the fire plugs in it. I mean, nice little tin. I expect you could, if you wanted to use this for making char as well, it would probably work well enough for that. So it's a nice tin. Uh, yeah, that's what it is, a nice tin, right? Okay, so this is the ferrocerium rod. It is a half inch thick diameter. It has an overall length of four and a quarter inches, but an exposed length of two and one half inches. It is an offshore production, and I tell you why that's important. I think you'll recognize when you look at these strikers, they seem to be pretty generic to most of the ferrocerium rods that are made in uh, offshore countries. And um, do they work? Well, yeah, most of the time they do work. But there is one of the first issues I ran up against with this ferrocerium rod. Now, it is the same composition as ones I have from other companies, either ones I've bought on eBay or AliExpress or even Uber, Uberlieben. They use the same type of metal, so there's no difference as far as that goes. The striker, however, when I received this from Bigfoot Bushcraft, would not strike a spark on this ferrocerium rod. There was no edge. There was no little edge or burr on the edge of the striker. It was just smooth. So I was quite disappointed about that. Uh, now, that was easy enough to fix. I just took a file and filed the top of the striker off until I created a burr on that side. It's not as good as some of the other ones I have, but it works effectively as you'll see in a few minutes time. Now, I did reach out to the company and let them know that I wasn't happy with the striker that goes with this ferrocerium rod. And they say, yes, they, it was a problem that they had noted that some of their recent productions that they had received did not have good strikers, but they were working to fix that. So I'm not, I wouldn't hold that against them. Likely when you get yours, if you purchase from them it'll be of working quality. So those are the three products that were sent to me. So now what I'm going to do is go down to the fire pit and the first test we're going to do is to compare the ProCamTech and the Bigfoot Bushcraft fire plugs one against the other in terms of how long will they burn. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to combine the length of burn time with the fact that I have actually have the two fire plugs sitting in my billy can of water right here because uh, I just want to show you that they are in fact waterproof. The company, both companies claim that the fire plugs are waterproof and that they will uh, can withstand being submerged in water for a period of time and still work. And I'll, you know, I'll give both companies that. They do. They both work just the way they say. Uh, they will both light up. Um, there is a, a caveat to that, which I'll talk about in a little while, but let me get the two of these out. Oh, they've been in there a while, while and they're quite wet. 
as you can see. Now, I am going to help them along a little bit in that I'm going to dry them off a little bit uh, on my pant leg. Actually, that's all I'm going to do is just roll them up and down my pant leg a little bit. You know, these things aren't going to light. Okay, interesting observation right off the top. The water that I put it in, it was warm. It wasn't a uh, cold water from the lake. Both of these fire plugs have gotten very, very soft. I'm just working them right now to expose fibers. So this is a test I can't even tell you how well it's going to work out. So I have exposed a lot of fibers from the Bigfoot bushcraft and doing the same using exactly the same method for the one from Procamptech. I am noticing that the Bigfoot bushcraft does fluff up a little easier and maybe a little better. Okay, so what I'm going to do at this point, those are both still soaking wet. I'm hoping that they're going to light here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to light them and let the camera run for the length of burn to record the burn time. I'll speed it up for, the per when it, for playback, but uh, we'll use the camera to time them. So what I can tell you so far is that Bigfoot Bushcraft claims that their fire plugs will run for five minutes. And I verified that that's true. Yeah, they do. They run for about five minutes. Now, I've only tested a few of them so far, and they have not, not been this wet. So let's just see what happens. Not using the ferrocerium rod for this. I just want to get them lit and lit as quickly as I can. Right, they lit right up, despite the fact that they were soaking wet. And what I mean by soaking wet is they were soft and mushy. But they both lit up. Okay, at this point, I'm just going to let the camera run. And uh, when they go out, we'll come back. All right, I'd say uh, that was pretty much an even tie there. Both of them have gone out. And I'd say that was pretty much exactly the same time. All right, I have another test for these that I want to show you now. All right, to move things along a little quicker, I went ahead and fluffed up both of the fire plugs. So this is the fire plug from uh, Bigfoot Bushcraft. And uh, to be honest, it fluffed up, I think, I do believe it fluffs up nicer and exposes more fibers than does the one from Procamtech. I mean, it's not a dramatic difference in the two of them, but it is a little easier to fluff up or to expose the fibers than it is with the Procamtech. So, uh, well, we'll see whether or not that means a difference in terms of lighting them. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to be using the ferrocerium rod from Bigfoot Bushcraft. It will do the job. It, it's, it's a ferrocerium rod like most others and it's effective for lighting these things right up. But I'm going to do something a little different. I'm actually going to light them and then pour water on them to douse them out and I and then see if we can't relight them. I actually feel that that may represent a more realistic real-world test and terms of if you're trying to light a fire on very wet ground or in the rain or on snow or anything else that might extinguish these plugs is will they relight? I think, well to be honest, I was surprised and pleased a minute ago when I did the test where I had them sitting in my billy can in water because the water I used was actually hot. It was water left over from when I made a cup of tea just before and the water was hot enough that it actually made the plugs soft and squishy and I thought they had absorbed a lot of water. And in fact, uh, uh, when they lit up that easily, I was quite impressed. But I think that might be a different story than relighting them once these are, with their exposed fibers, are lit. So let's get these lit up using the first serum rod. I think what I'm going to do, and it's not so much a test to see which one will light. I want to see if I can get them both to light at the same time or very near to it. So let's see what happens. Now they're both lit. So that was easy enough. They both lit up just the way they go. I'm going to cast a little shadow over the two of them so you can see what's going on here. Now let me just take my water and put them out. 
All right, they're out. Now, here comes the fun. They are soaking wet. And I'm going to squeeze some water out of them just to give them a little bit of advantage. I mean, if I was using these and I really wanted them to work, um, I would do exactly what I'm doing now, which is to try to squeeze the water out to give them every advantage possible to relight. I'm not so sure what's going to happen here. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, well, I'm not so sure that these are going to light. I'll strike them with the first serum rod and see what happens. Not happening. No, let's take a lighter and see if we can get them to light with an open flame. So you can see what I'm doing. I'll Okay, uh, that's enough playing with this. I think the demonstration and the point that I wanted to make is that as long as these fire plugs, either one, the Procamtec or the Bigfoot Bushcraft, are intact and haven't been broken apart to expose their fibers, they are waterproof. But the trick is, once the fibers have been exposed, if they get wet, you're going to have a hard time relighting them. Now, I expect that if I dried these off with my bandana, put them in my pocket, let my pants soak up the moisture, that eventually I could get them to relight. Or I could try to work on the ends that haven't been exposed yet to... Um, see if they how they will light uh, here's something else I did want to say about the Bigfoot bushcraft I think this is the easiest way to demonstrate it here's another way of exposing fibers they're not a tubular fashion but they do seem to unwrap as if they had been rolled up as uh, you can see what I'm doing uh, that's not as easy to do with the pro camp tech I have a, a hard time unrolling the material to expose it that way. I mean, it will work, but not quite as easily. There we go, it's starting to work now. All right, so now I have some exposed material for the two of them. I'm just gonna use a lighter this time to see if they will light up. They're still resisting going. All right. The Bigfoot bushcraft lit up. And in fact, I think the ProCamp Tech, no, it did not light. The ProCamp Tech is lit. It's not burning as, uh, well, it is now. Okay, it caught up. I think there was just enough of a difference in how much I exposed that uh, allowed the Bigfoot Bushcraft one to light up just a little quicker. Okay, that's the demonstration I wanted to do there. And the point being, of course, is that as long as they're not damaged internally or haven't been exposed, then, then they will remain waterproof. But once they have been opened up, they're a lot harder to get lit. Okay, th I thought what I'd like to do is just share you some of my thoughts on the fire plug from Bigfoot Bushcraft in comparison to the fire plug from ProCamptech. Um, honestly, the results that I got were not what I expected when I started out with this. I fully expected that the ProCamptech fire plug would be every bit as good as the one from Bigfoot Bushcraft and that there would be, not be a whole lot of difference. So in my testing, as you saw, they run at the same time when they're lit. They both run for about five minutes. Um, that's, that's not a surprise. They, and I had done that testing before, so there was no surprise and no advantage to either fire plug there. When it comes to having been soaked in water in their intact state, then they both seem to work just as well. There is no uh, advantage one to another there. When they have been opened up, lit, and then doused with water, they both work just as poorly. And that's, that's the truth on that one. They are both very hard to relight. 
Now, here's where the advantage comes in for the Bigfoot bushcraft. It is much easier to work the material to expose a lot more fiber, making it easier to light either with a ferrocerium rod or any other type of sparker or a direct flame. So there is an advantage to the Bigfoot bushcraft when it comes to lightability. It also appears to be easier to unroll. If you want to kind of open it up as a, as a pad, uh, you can do that easier with the Bigfoot bushcraft. Now, here's the thing that you have to ask yourself. The Bigfoot bushcraft sells at, for 50 of these, they sell for $30. The Procamp Tech, for 50 of these, they sell for $10. So the question is, now that's the prices as they list them on their website with, without any sales, so that's the regular price. The question is, is the Bigfoot Bushcraft fire plug three times as good as the Pro Camp Tech? That's only a question I'll let you decide. I think, in fact, it is a slightly better product, but is it worth three times the price? Again, I'll let you decide that. Now, here's the other product that I wanted to talk about, which is the ferrocerium rod that I demonstrated. As I stated, this is a ferrocerium rod like every other one that comes out of China. They're all the same metal, they're all the same design, and you can tell pretty much they all have exactly the same striker. I was disappointed with this striker, but I'll trust that the company has taken care of the quality control when it turns it for the striker. What I wanted to know was, was this worth the money that they're asking for? So I looked on the Uberlieben website, not because I, ha they, I, I have any allegiance to Uberlieben, because I'll buy them wherever I can get them if the price is right. But I did want to see if I can do an apples-to-apple -apple comparison, and Uberlieben has a model of ferrocerium rod known as the Zunden, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, that is the same size and has a wood handle on the end of it, and it is selling for, I think I do have to look at my paper for this one. Yes, $22 right now. So the, the Uberlieben Zunden, same size as this one, sells for $22, whereas the full retail price on the Bigfoot Bushcraft for their version is $40. Um, I, I'll say right up front, that's not a good deal. It's not a good deal to buy this from Bigfoot Bushcraft. Now, there is a sale on, at least at the time of this video, that may make it a closer comparison. And I think uh, Bigfoot Bushcraft has some work to do to bring their prices in line with comparable pr uh, products out there. But uh, it is, uh, in every way that I can tell, identical to those other products. Okay. <sighs> This is the issue I have when products are sent to me. I kind of had a preconceived notion that, in fact, there would be no difference at all between these products and the difference would be the cost. Turns out I wasn't entirely right that the Bigfoot Bushcraft does have a better product than ProCampTech. But the question, again, you have to ask yourself, is it worth three times the price? If the price comes in more in line or even just slightly above the ProCamp deck, then I would say pick one over the other. It really doesn't matter to, as far as I'm concerned. I wanted to share this with you not because I felt I wanted to dump on the company. Don't get me wrong. They're a new company starting out and everybody has to work through their pricing and their marketing. It's just that you have to decide where you want to put your money. Okay, if you have any comments on either how I ran the test or on either of these products, or you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.